Hello and welcome to episode 14 of I Will Cast Anything. We're here on Cloud Kingdom for a PvP. Player in the top right hand corner, Frash Q, who uh, sent me this replay. And the player in the bottom left hand corner is Antiva. These players are both in the Masters League in the EU region. And I'm told that this match was part of a uh, weekly tournament. It's run by a European team called Emanate. So, should be seeing some exciting high-level play here. Now, the last PvP I cast, we saw double four-gate all-in Zealot Stalker rushes. Uh, one via Prism and one via... Sorry, one via Pylon and one via Warp Prism. That was pretty exciting, I have to say. Big base race. Nail-biting finish. I would be surprised <laughs> if we see <laughs> double... 4-gate Zealot Stalker rushes from these two players. But who knows? Anything can happen in StarCraft. The mirror matchups are always fun because you can watch the production tab and see who's getting just that tiny little lead in getting units out. Which at the moment looks like Antiva. And who is getting that tiny little lead in getting structures built. Which again looks like Antiva. And you can also see who does different scouting patterns. Looks like Frass was just checking it for a very early proxy pylon on the top of his base there. Every player will have their own little spots that they've been bitten on proxy pylons before that they'll check for in these matchups. Gas is going down at nearly identical times. So mirror builds so far. Looks like Antiva slightly ahead in his probe scout as well as they pass. Just slightly closer to Frash Q's base. Antiva laying down some wisdom. Even with a good spread, you can't beat an upgrade advantage. Well, depends how good your spread is. I made you a favor killing probes. I'm not sure. Ah, we see a deviation. Frash getting that second gas. Well, not much of a deviation. Seconds earlier, perhaps. Thought we were finally going to see a difference in these bills, but no, the mirroring continues. Frash earlier getting that second gas and earlier getting that first zealot out. Prevent any probe scouting of his base. And start to tech up. Warp Gate is researching. Oh, Antiva getting a stalker already instead of that zealot, so opting for the ranged option just out of the close range here we see the scouting probes returning back knowing that those units are coming out and it's time to get out of dodge both players going for warp gate and it looks like while Frash Q has gone for zealot and sentry defense early on for his base. Antiva has gone for Stalker defense for his base early on. Tiny little differences there. We'll see if any pylons get put out. Ooh, a starport from Frash. As well as another gateway. Where's that starport? Stargate, sorry. Stargate, starport. Easy mistake to make. I hope you forgive me. That is a major deviation though. That is a big difference between these two strategies could be seeing some early phoenix or maybe uh, maybe void rays should be interesting to see a couple of sentries coming out and these stalkers pushing out onto the map for Antiva taking wanting to take a bit of control here more gateways from Frash It's going to be up to three gateways. And he is making a phoenix from that stargate. So, question is, will Antiva spot this? That this air attack is coming his way. Unchecked phoenix can be devastating in the harass. Nice force field there. And it looks like two sentries and a zealot are going to be able to keep four stalkers from gaining any scouting information. Behind this map control take an expansion from Antiva. 
saying, oops, not sure what's going on. Oh, run out of energy, pushing up. Oh, that's a very nice force field there. This stalker will go down, so does that zealot. But that's a pretty good trade, one stalker for one zealot. Uh, and just more phoenix now. More and more and more. Three up already, here they come. Oh, Twilight Council. So Robo and Twilight Council for Antiva. Early Stargate for Frash. Frash still hasn't expanded yet. And he's moving out with this little force here as well. So taking back map control. Here comes an Immortal. Here come a couple of Zealots. And it looks like we're going to see a push from Frash Q pretty soon. One base. Phoenix. Sentry. Zealot. Stalker. Second. Just finishing up for Antiva. He's got two sentries now to aid with walling off, but he's going to have a hard time. There's a big surface area to defend here. Here comes that Phoenix harass that we were expecting. Looks like three workers. Yep, three workers taken. Oh, and that's provided an excellent diversion. Pulling away those stalkers. This immortal is going to do a lot of damage. Stalker going down. Having to force field off his main there, but he might have to sacrifice this expansion. I think Antiva is going to lose. Oh, picks up a stalker. Blasts it out of the sky. And now stuck in his own base thanks to his defensive force fields. Antiva can't get down there to save this expansion. And these units are being picked up. Both of the sentries there picked up. I think Antiva's in trouble here. There goes that second base. Down already. He's researching Blink. But it's not going to finish in time for him to bust out of this. He's just got a mass stalkers now, if he possibly can. But he's only got two gateways. He's getting a third one. I think he's going to be able to stop this from pushing up into his main. Yes, he has. But unit loss is favoring Frash. And Frash has taken out that expansion. So that's a big investment loss there. And obviously, got six workers in the end there. So very effective early push from Frash. Whoop, one more worker just for funsies. Pretty good health on those phoenixes. Pulling back his army across the map now and putting his own expansion up. Confident that he has the lead. Good, good play from Frash. And he's just going to go around with these phoenix. Making a nuisance of himself. He's not going to be able to deny that expansion, although if he brings this force across he might well deny it again he could block the stalkers up inside the main base, although Blink has finished now so Antiva will be able to bust out oh, oh oh, one of the phoenixes does go down, but more workers killed more harassment, and again he pulled the stalkers up to the mineral line so that he could push in with his own force Force field goes up. These stalkers can blink down though. Or maybe not. I thought I saw him research and blink. Doesn't seem to be using it. Forces the cancel. Denies the expansion. Meanwhile, back at Frash's base. His expansion is almost done. He's got immortals coming out. I think he's getting ready for the killing blow. But these Blink Stalkers now, now that second base is gone. And Tiva's saying, okay, I have to be aggressive now. You're a base ahead of me. I have no choice but to attack to try and level the playing field. And he's picking off a few of these elements here. Might even get a sentry. No. Not going to. Oh, can he pick off some more of these Phoenixes? He blinks forward. Oh, still three left alive. Working on these rocks now. And having taken control, he can build his expansion again for the third time. And this time might have a chance of staying up, but there's good army out in the field. Wheeled those rocks down to about half health and then pulled away. He's worried about these phoenixes coming in and picking up his units. This is a strong defensive force now. Plenty of energy in those sentries to build force fields. 
to keep Antiva out. Oh, he blinks his stalkers up into the main base, sneaks around very, very nice. How many workers can Antiva kill to make up for that excellent Phoenix harass we saw earlier? He gets four. Has a bit of a crack at an assimilator and then blinks away. So, a bit of a desperation move, I think. But at least Antiva's doing something to try and stay in this game. Lots of immortals coming out from both sides now. Oh, no. Very aggressive pylon placement there. Thinking about trying to catch one of these phoenixes off guard. Robotics Bay coming for fresh. Second one. So he's going to be able to churn out a lot of immortals if he wants to. Oh, and the Dark Shrine. So, Dark Templar potentially coming in the not too distant future for Antiva. Who has retreated to his base after that uh, little push. Little harass there. Meanwhile, Frash. Coming back, picking up a sentry there. Not entirely sure why these sentries were left for that third. It's like, oh, one goes down. And just one Phoenix remaining now of that early flight. But it doesn't matter because Frash Q has a big old army rolling in towards the second base. Antiva trying to get his expansion up and running. Trying to get back even. Here we see Colossus coming now for Fresh Q. He's got a much stronger army here. Using force fields to split up the enemy. Oh, that's gorgeous. Those immortals going to work. Rival force fields. There's more force fields than there is clear ground in here at the moment. Those stalkers going crazy in there. These sentries stuck in the middle, wandering up and down. It looks like they're going to go down, but now these sentries are going to start running out of energy and start being killed. But look, Crash Q's immortals are being kept at the back, they're not being able to do any damage. I think Antiva's done very well out of this engagement despite being outnumbered, but finally the number and army value advantage for Crash Q paying off. There is a Dark Templar here hacking away and no detection for Crash Q, so he's going to be forced to run away thanks to that very, very clever decision by Antiva to go Dark Templar, so Crash Q not able to make a big dent with that attack. And Antiva is now ahead in terms of resources lost, thanks to pulling off a very, very nice engagement there. Very clever use of force fields. Under a lot of stress, there was a lot of force fields going on. And Crash Q now saying, right, it's time to throw down a ton of gateways, another Robo Bay, it's time to start producing things. We've got Thermal Lance upgrade on the way. A lot more gateways going down for Antiva as well now. I think both of these guys know that it's time to push up to a higher army count. Observer coming out from Antiva to see what's going on over here. Gonna see a lot of gateways. Plus one weapons coming. For Brash Q and more Colossi. More and more and more. Two Colossi coming at once out of that Robo Bay. I would expect Frash Q to push in once Thermal Lance finishes up and he has four Colossi in his army. But these Archons are gonna be handy. I think Antiva has done very well to stay in this game after taking those early losses to that Phoenix harass and losing this Nexus once and having it denied, forcing it, forced to cancel it a second time. He's managed to stay in this game. Crashview does have a fairly extensive supply lead though, but that didn't help him last time. He had a supply lead, he had a better army composition. And he still lost. So we'll see what, what happens in the next engagement. I don't think Antiva is going to be too eager to push out, given how far behind he's been for most of this game. But he's starting to produce some classes of his own. He's getting plus one weapons. But here comes that push. Extended Thermal Lance is finished. Plus one ground weapons is about to finish. I think Brash wants to end this match and not allow Antiva time to recover. 
got three Colossus up here. And another one coming across the map. This is going to be a big, big ask for Antiva. It looks like he might let Frash get up into his natural and then try and trap him in, perhaps? A bit hesitant. A bit hesitant from Frash. Doesn't want to commit yet. Doesn't want to commit. He's got his observer up. He's seen this army down here now. Here we go. There's the bubble. There's the Archons. Look at that extended thermal lance range. Those Colossi are sitting way back here and tearing through the army of Antiva. Crash Q now surely has got this game won. Supply gap going out. Colossus is dead and that's GG.